So welcome everyone. I'm going to talk about my trip to Romania today and sort of how I contacted people and how it came to be. And a lot of people ask me why Romania? And this was my third trip that I've been there. And I'm going to start off with my little graphic here since I made this today. Um, so yeah, this is a, a sketching an old town and it's a nice way to start before I do the slideshow. Um, I don't know, has anyone here ever been to Romania before? Oh, so there are some people that have been here, so that's wonderful. Um, and I'm gonna go a little bit into it. I, I first went there in 1998. Um, one of my good friends got married uh, and she, we met her, she's Romanian through her husband, who our husbands are best friends and they were in a computer users group together. And we hung out a lot and we were the only Americans that actually went to her wedding. And um, we've had this sort of lifelong friendship. So we had wanted to do a sketch tour. She's actually not a sketcher. She is a biologist. She teaches uh, biology at Drury University in Missouri. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my slideshow and get started and talk about our trip and kind of how we got where we were going. Um, let's see. So this was, I, I like to start this off with the, with the presentation. Let me go to full screen mode too. They actually have a really nice setup here for all the uh, AV stuff. So that's very nice. It's, it's the advantage of being at a university. They have all the stuff that you use when you're teaching class. Um, let's see. But talking and looking for things at the same time is a little bit more difficult. So this was us in 1998 uh, at both the ceremonies. They have a civil ceremony and a ceremony. I guess I guess you get two different licenses: one at the state and one at the you know the church. Um, and so she was writing a book on flowers for uh, Romanian flowers, and so I tagged along with her, and we did this two week trip around Romania. And I said, we need to bring sketches here. We need to bring sketches here. It's so beautiful. Uh, we saw a lot of different, the thing that's really interesting about Romania is that it has so many different architectural styles. If you're in the North, kind of up in Sapanza where the, um, where it's kind of on the Ukrainian border, you have a lot of the wooden churches and, you know, similar architecture to that. If you're up on the um, North, East Coast, you kind of see, or Northeast area that's close, close to Moldova, you have the painted churches. Um, on the Western part, you have a lot of the Habsburg style architecture and some beautiful Art Nouveau stuff. Now, I'm interested to see how they continue restoring it because sometimes the restoration on these buildings is perhaps a little bit heavy handed, mm -hmm. but it's a really fascinating uh, how much this country's growing. So between 1998 and 2014, I was shocked at how much the country had grown and how they've really been upping the infrastructure and the driving's a lot better. And um, it's really become a beautiful country. And we had, you know, it was just two ladies road tripping <laughs> and driving. And one thing about Iwana that is fun when traveling, but not at first, is that she has this habit of picking up hitchhikers. Uh, and, and I think hitchhiking, that's one of those things, and I don't know if, if other people um, have experienced this. Usually they tell you if you hitchhike, you will be murdered. And Iwana said that they used to always hitchhike and sit to save gas. She's very much into saving the earth. So she picks up anyone she sees carrying a bag of groceries or whatever. And, you know, it's a, it's a very altruistic thing, but it took me a while to get used to it. Although I do have a funny story on the day of her wedding, we had gotten our hair done at this very old salon. And like I said, things were, she was, she was actually, um, in the square when they deposed Ceausescu, like she was one of the college students protesting. And so things in 98 were still sort of in transition. And so we were at the salon where they had, you know, you know these really old heaters and our hair was up to, up to here. And so she said, let's hitchhike to the chapel while our husbands were waiting there with no air conditioning and suits and getting angrier by the second and melting. And we got in the we got in the car and all of a sudden you want to said we have to get out of the car now he thinks we're prostitutes and i said well you're in a wedding dress <laughs> so we had to sprint 
I don't know how many blocks to the chapel the translator had left. Fortunately, one of her friends had translated for us. So it was, that's, that's one of the funnier hitchhiking stories with her. She wouldn't mind me telling the story. She would think that was funny. And I hope that she gets to see the video of this. Uh, she's a, but she's a very um, great person to travel with. Um, and so there's a picture of us. They made us wear those little booties. They were restoring this. It's, that's Fagarash, which is a citadel. And when this is in 2014 when we went together and since then, they've added a lot of uh, reconstruction to it. So they're basically, they became part of the EU in 2007, and they're part of NATO, and they've been, like, basically redoing the infrastructure, and they, like, this Fagarash, they built, like, a new wall, and they're restoring all of these properties. It's always kind of a tough thing, because, like, should you restore these properties? It's kind of neat to see them a little bit, and I understand why they want to restore them, uh, but like they're, they're like rebuilding them. Um, and that's sort of the, I'm a huge castle buff. That's one reason I like traveling there. And, you know, it's kind of like, oh, when you read the history of castles, they've been rebuilt like all the time. So it's not like it's an unusual thing for a castle to be redone and restyled. Um, but anyway, so this was us, this was me sketching at CBU back in 2014. Uh, and, uh, we decided we wanted to take a group of sketchers and we had planned originally to do it in 2020, but of course nothing happened in 2020. And we, we talked about it for years and we finally decided we were gonna do it anyway, you know, once COVID was over. Um, and at that point I wanted to meet with the sketchers in Bucharest. And that's one thing that's really wonderful about this worldwide community that we built is that you can contact anyone and meet artists and sketch with them. And so I wrote, um, and I have some tips here. I'm sure many of you have done this already because you're here, um, but you know, how amazing is it that we have this many chapters of urban sketchers now around the world that you can visit. And it's such a great way to meet people is to sketch with them. And uh, it's, it's sort of a language. I mean, I think that's one of the things that really attracted besides the love of drawing and sketching, which, you know, we would do that wherever we are, but the ability to connect with other people and find that common thread to be is really amazing. And um, so I contacted the chapter, chapter head. He had started, Luger had started chapters in Bucharest and in Constanza, which is Constanza, the people that went to Romania before, have you been to Constanza? It's the sea town that's like on, it used, it's kind of a resort town on the Black Sea. And um, we went there in 98, but we didn't go the next trips after that. We're hoping to go, we're going again in 2024. The big impediment to going that often is when we went in 2022, Iwana was on sabbatical, so she had time to travel and um, book everything. It, like, so her part is she, I kind of deal with the, you know, bringing the sketchers in when we do these trips and she books everything and figures out all the stuff. Although our, our tours are probably a little bit more, I, I don't know how to describe it at one point, and I, I will get to it when we get to the slide. She, um, we saw people selling mushrooms on the side of the road because it's the season. And so we stopped and she bought a bushel of mushrooms. And so she brought them to her mother's apartment. Her mother has like a little tiny apartment in Bucharest, communist style era, it, you know, because so it's very tiny. It's like, but she doesn't need a big place, but she brings this bushel and said, I'm bringing, you know, 10 people over to eat mushrooms at your house. <laughs> and her mother was not thrilled about that. Um, and it, you know, it, but that's kind of the, she, she has definitely got the authentic experience. She loves plants and, you know, going to all these different vendors. So it's kind of an experience that I probably could never, like if I organized it on my own, I could never give them. Um, and I joined the um, Bucharest Facebook group and started meeting some of the people online before I started doing the outings. So that they seem to, you know, uh, people seem to like that. We love it when people join ours that are gonna be visiting um, you know, we occasionally have people that find the Cincinnati group by Googling Cincinnati and urban sketchers. So I, I you know, I, I started talking to some of the admins of that group months ahead of time and said, you know, we're going to try it. Of course. So if you relive 2022, you know, at first, you know, we have, we're getting over COVID. And so we're having, Iwana and I are having all these discussions about, well, 
you know, how are we going to test for COVID? There are all these restrictions in place. And then, of course, the Ukrainian uh, invade, the invasion on the Ukraine happened. And even though it is not as, like the action is not that close to Romania, but you can imagine everybody in Europe was not happy about it and still is not, it's still happening. And it's put a lot of pressure on Europe. So we were kind of like, do we do this or not? Is it gonna affect us? When we went in 2014 is when the Crimea had been annexed and we were wondering, you know, there was no real influence except for prices going up. But it was a big concern for a lot of the people that were going to go with us. Uh, we had a couple people drop out before we went. Uh, this is our visit in 2022. So we kept actually this visit much more, we, we kept it mostly to Transylvania because unfortunately, as much as we'd like to, we wanted to see everything in the country, but you know, we, we couldn't, you know, we had to kind of concentrate on a geographic pull area. So this is sort of the Transylvania region. We spent a couple of days in Bucharest. And this is Iwana, by the way. So, <laughs> um, and so she, um, we started out in Bucharest and I have this sketch that um, my friend Jeb, he is, he helps run the Cincinnati Urban Sketchers and he, he and his wife joined us and he did this wonderful book, uh, this wonderful uh, accordion sketchbook. And he, he kind of, he was much more linear than I am. You can notice I jump all around and he had this really nice diary that he did the whole trip. And uh, Mugar was super welcoming. And so we, uh, when we got into Bucharest, they all met us and we had a sketch outing and uh, we met in our hotel room. And then as we were sketching, most of these people here are the people that were on our trip. Um, the two people on ends here, uh, Victor and Reluca, they're both part of the chapter and then Mugar. And then we kept having more and more people join. Um, this is us sketching outside. You saw a little bit of the video before. Um, and we eventually ended up at this monastery and more and more people kept joining us. And at one point, um, the man in the um, light blue shirt, he was part of English radio. So he interviewed me on the radio and all these people came coming. Some, the guy in um, the pink shirt is a Spanish art critic that just happened to be in town because he has an apartment. So he had hung out and we went to lunch and it was just one of those very organic days where everything just kept getting you know, bigger and bigger. Um, and this is a picture of us all standing there with our sketches. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's another children's book illustrator um, the woman uh, in the blue shirt was there from Berlin visiting. She's actually Romanian, but she was just visiting for the weekend and saw it on their Facebook page and joined us. And it was really neat meeting all the different artists. And we found out, and I guess this is one thing that's great when you travel, is that we found out that um, there's a really strong artist um, like uh, collective in, in Romania and like Eastern Europe, and they go travel to you know, Bulgaria or to Italy or, uh, and they, they do what they call art camps where they paint and then sell what they've done. So a lot of these artists, um, one of the artists we met in uh, Sigishwara that uh, Muger told us to talk to, um, he was a UNESCO artist and he travels all the time painting and drawing and going to gallery shows. And for us, it was really exciting to see such a strong art community because I don't even think we have anything like that really in the United States where we, um, you know, have these sort of, I mean, Urban Sketchers is the closest that I've seen, you know, to this type of gathering where it's like a bunch of artists sort of do art together. Um, you know, I don't, I've not ever seen that in, say, you know, you have children's illustration workshops, but it's not the same thing where you're doing art and paintings together. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and then you have some of our group from there too. Um, and here we are having lunch afterwards. It was really fun. And Mugger, he has a really wonderful style where he draws really fast. The architecture in Bucharest is really interesting because you've got a mixture of old and new as it is with all cities. Like even if you go out in Auckland, you have like architecture from the 1800s and new architecture. Um, we were in the old town area, which is, um, oops, I went too far. Uh, we were in the old town area, um, which has a lot of architecture that has a very French influence from the 1800s. Um, there was a time when um, they were trying to emulate Paris, so they have a lot of architecture like that. And then you kind of have the, the 60s style uh, brutalist architecture that's, you know, a lot of the apartment buildings. And then you have... Um, you know, a lot of new stuff. Um, 
that's being built. So there's a lot of variety to sketch there. Um, and he has a really quick loose style where he does a quick drawing like in, with a fountain pen and just floods it with color. And it was just really great, uh, beautiful work. Um, and so he, they met with us and we went out and had a beer and, and lunch. And then we moved out and he gave us names of artists that were friends of his. So we met some in different cities if they were available. So we rented, Iwana rented us this van. So this was our little uh, uh, trip around town. So that, that really worked out because there's 10 of us, I think, um, including the driver. We ended up with, um, I think, six people joining us as sketchers. Like I said, we had a couple people drop out because they were really concerned about travel. I mean, on top of COVID that you had this and, you know, we, we understood. And then we also had some really weird you know, last summer travel was strange where people, uh, that one woman was supposed to join us and her flight was canceled between Cincinnati and New York and she couldn't get a plane for days. And by the time she could have gotten to Bucharest, it would have been late, too late for us to pick her up. So she had to cancel. And, um, you know, there was, I had told because in, in my infinite wisdom, I had told everybody, oh, why don't you book through? I love Skipple Airport. And I said, oh, book through there. They're a nice airport. Or of course, they were all getting texts the day we were leaving saying the baggage is, we have nobody to handle baggage. <laughs> so a couple people didn't get their luggage for weeks after they, and of course, my mom and I flew a totally different airline and didn't have any problem. And I hope they didn't think that I was like trying to get everybody off our airline so that we could... <laughs> It was, it was one of those weird summers. Actually, a friend of mine did a sketch workshop in um, Ireland and there was somebody that didn't get their luggage till after they got home. So there, there was, hopefully it's getting, hope, did everybody get their luggage that flew here? I hope so. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a weird year for, for travel. So we, we drove around and this is, a, I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about where we went here. Uh, we went to Pelish Castle. We kind of have this obsession with animals when we're, traveling. So this couple was walking this really cute dog and we asked if we could get our picture taken with it. And the, 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 the woman in the couple was a little bit unsure about us and gave us this really weird look, but the husband's like, sure, I'll take your picture. And, you know, so that's why the dog's in the picture with us. <laughs> um, but Pelish is a really beautiful, that's, that's a sketch I did of Pelish. Pelish is a really beautiful, um, uh, they built, they decided to import a Royal family. If, it, I think it was like the 1800s. And so they built this, this beautiful sort of, um, and I can't remember, maybe the architects will remember the, the architectural style that this is, but it was, they have a lot of art of, when I first saw it in, um, when I first saw it in 98, they had some original Mucha paintings in there. Um, they didn't seem to have it up this time, but it's, it was, it's got that sort of, um, I, I love the, I love the style of this, I, mean, I guess 1800s, 1700s. Um, uh, and it was, they, they wanted, they've spared no expense. It's very fancy inside. Uh, it's in Sanaya. I don't know why it just selected like that. I must have been, okay. Um, and then we went to Brasov is where the famous, uh, castle that, um, everybody knows for Dracula, which actually, uh, Vlad Tepish never lived there. And, <laughs> and they have all these things for, for, um, you, you know, talking about Vlad Tepish because he's in the books, but he actually turns out to have never been a lot of places that they said, but I think they've kind of gone with it as far as the castle. So somebody just bought Brand Castle a couple of years ago. And this is some of the architecture. And this is what I was talking about where they've got the Habsburg architecture. Um, this is in Transylvania. And this is one of my sketches from the square. And this is uh, the three of us sketching um, from our group. And uh, this is one of the spouses. And <laughs> This is a, this is from our Cincinnati group, um, Jeb and Ann. Um, but you know, this is us sketching in the um, area. So there's a lot of really beautiful areas to sketch, but they actually have done this. This castle was sold, I think about five years ago. And they, I had always said that if they really wanted it to be a tourist attraction, they had to go like full into the whole mythos of vampires and stuff. Most Romanians aren't that thrilled about it. But whoever bought it has like all this lore in it about like ghosts and stuff like that. And when I first went, it was all about history and talking about, you know, the king that they brought in and, you know, the, the big processions and stuff that they had. And they have that in one room now and the rest of it's all about showing parts of Dracula movies and 
if you've been to the castle before, you've probably seen it. It kind of has evolved over the years. Um, but there's just a lot of these, there's, there's all these really nice fortified churches that, um, where you, they're part castle and part church and like the whole village would go in them to avoid. This one was really cool because it had areas where you could go in, you could go in between the walls where they would shoot up people that were trying to invade and you could pour stuff on people. And it was a really cool, um, they and this, go in, they go in to avoid what? Uh, the, the, to avoid invasion. Um, you know, a lot of, I, I want to say areas of Europe, but a lot of Eastern Europe and particularly that, that area was particularly, uh, occupied by whatever force. And I don't know how, if they were that successful, a lot of times of being, I, I don't think they were, Romania was not a country till the late 1800s and their borders significantly changed after World War I and II. Um, and actually half of Romania used to be part of Hungary. So sort of the whole West, or yeah, the whole West side, everything's in Hungarian and in Romanian. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I think it's not that unusual to have that sort of situation like close to different, it used to be years ago, Wallachia and the um, Transylvania sort of, these areas have kind of changed hands over the years. That happens a lot in these. Um, and so like when you go to the different painted churches, which I don't have pictures of those, I, we went in 2014, they actually have a lot of paintings of invading forces. Actually, a lot of the painted churches were commissioned in the 1500s because as they were winning against the Turks, they um, thought that that was sort of the, the reward to God was to do these paintings of the, on the, um, uh, on the on the churches which is really it's kind of like almost like the comic books of the day you know a lot of people couldn't read and you see on the inside of these churches which unfortunately i i'm talking more about the more recent trip but when we went in 2014 so the inside they have it's kind of they have the paintings of all the different saints being killed in horrible ways so it's almost like an action film and then on the outside they have like sort of this depiction of judgment day that's painted it looks like it would be actually really fun to paint because it's like all these people, you know, it's, it's sort of like these Armageddon type paintings. It's sort of almost like a fantasy painting. And we were actually happy to see when we were in Bucharest that they actually, the, they're painting new ones and they credit all the artists that worked on it. And I said, how do you get a gig getting to paint these really cool paintings? Um, but this actually was, this has like a lot of holes. Like if you go into this wall, people didn't live there. It was just to like protect the people that were inside. Um, and Sigishwara is actually, if you've ever been to Toledo in Spain, it's, it's a walled city, kind of like Toledo, but people still live there. And um, it's a really beautiful, you know, old architecture. This is actually from the clock tower. You can go to the top of the clock tower, tower and take pictures or sketch. Um, and this was, this is, uh, I was sketching here in the town square. Uh, I love this picture because this is our friend Andy who was on the trip and as he was sketching a small group of children formed and we're watching him sketch and then um, at the end I think it was Jeb like he also had a form of a group of nobody I didn't get any groups of children but Jeb and uh, Andy did and like one of them hugged him because they liked to sketch <laughs> it was really sweet and we we actually met an artist this is Radish and he um has a studio. It turned out to be across the, the hall. Iowana was calling him because Mugar said, oh, you need to talk to my friend Raj. He lives in, in Sigishwara. And she called him on the phone and he said, well, I'll be right over. And she, we said, you don't need to come. It was like dinner time. And by the time she got off the phone, he was there because the studio was across from our hotel. And he uh, hung up with, and he actually travels over. He was just in, I think, uh, Greece and he travels all over going to these art camps and painting. And he was, it was really fun looking at his studio and hanging out in there. Here he was showing me some of his work. He didn't do his, he did come out and sketch with us one night. He didn't do as much sketching like we did, but he uh, came out and hung out with us and sketched with us one evening. So that was really fun. Um, but it's just all these really beautiful places um, to sketch there. Um, this, is Huna, this is one of the castles that, that they've completely re rebuilt. And um, we were there in 2014 and they were partially done, but like they've added so much more and there's a lot fewer places you could kind of sneak around uh, because Iwana, she's sort of, 
you know, the first time we went there in 2014, we kind of walked around the grounds at night and, you know, probably places that you weren't normally supposed to walk around, but this, now they have everything sort of fenced off and they've built onto it. And, um, and this is us standing in front of there. Uh, and then this is this is a really, I had not heard of this town, just she put it on the itinerary at Alba Iulia. And it is like, if you look at it from the sky, it's star-shaped. It's like a, another citadel. And it had all the, there was a big festival going on. Or, um, and, and this was, it's, we were talking about our sketchbook. So this guy brought over a woman who uh, wanted to go to art school. So we were talking to her about becoming an artist and showing our sketches to her and stuff. So it was just really, it's just a fun, I, it's always neat. I mean, you all as sketchers have probably experienced this where people want to be artists and you end up talking to them and it, and, you know, hopefully you inspire some of them to become artists. Um, this, they, this was a, they had this really cool sort of uh, I, I, what would you call underground place in the Citadel where they store all the weapons and stuff. There probably is a better name than I just called it. And they were doing their Game of Thrones pose there. <laughs> we took a, they're trying to look very serious. Uh, I just thought it was funny. CBU is my favorite of uh, the Transylvania towns. Um, and it just was really, a. actually, speaking of Ukraine, there was a this was a peace march that was there the day that we were uh, that we arrived and they were walking through the streets. We saw a couple of, um, in, in case people were curious, because there were so many people and still are so many people um, leaving Ukraine, um, they weren't getting as many. And Romania is a um, Latin country, so they get people coming over, but they don't get as many staying because they don't have family members there. So a lot of people were fleeing through Moldova and through Poland, but not as much for, through Romania. But when we were in Brasov, we ran into a couple people that uh, that were walking their dog and they were living, uh, it was a mother and um, her daughters because uh, the men weren't allowed to leave. And we talked to them for a while. And some of the people that were working in the restaurants were Ukrainian. Um, you know, I actually, I'm not so worried about Romania. I'm more worried about Moldova because they um, are probably in a lot more danger um, and they've had some stuff politically. And I ask Iwana, you know, what's going to happen? Um, and we don't know uh, with them because their whole government just stepped down. So it's sort of a little bit fraught there right now. And, you know, I think there was a period of time where they talked about uniting the two countries. But I guess in the early 90s, Iwana said that it was had something to do with when they asserted their independence. Everybody said, oh, yeah, be an independent country. But now they're kind of on their own. Um, so I hope that, um, you know, things go better there. I mean, like I said, people are, are very scared there, but I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't travel there, but, you know, people asked, a lot of people asked about it. Um, and this is some of the sketching that we did there. Um, it was just a really, this is their square. This is a really pretty view with, with it being, a, let me all turn it around here because it's such a pretty, yeah. Is it going to turn? Oh. Yeah, it was really pretty seeing all the people with carriages. And I mean, it's really a, become a really beautiful country. You see people walking around all the time and, and people are always interested in the sketching. Um, and we're here. Um, here we are. What? Yeah, I know. They said that it was harder for the camera. I mean, I can leave it off and, and I'll just be in. I, I wanted it off too. Yeah, you can see it a little bit better through. This was uh, this is where the royal family is buried. Um, I don't think that they. I think they do have some relatives still alive um, from there, but obviously they don't. The royal family is not part of the government or anything anymore. Um, this is and then when we went back to Bucharest, um, Muger met up with us again and we sketched with them and saw more. There, it was hard to see it just in a couple of days, so. This is our final days there, sketching and looking at art supplies. And here's Jeb with his magnificent fold-out uh, uh, sketchbook that he did. I, I did a fold-out sketchbook too, but mine was a lot less logical than his was. <laughs> mine was sort of random stuff that happened. His actually had a linear storytelling story, uh, line. Um, and here we are the last day. Um, and actually I have this. Uh, as the last slide, so let me escape the and and then I, I can take some questions. Um, let's see. Uh, 
me just a second. Yeah, here we are toasting on the last day. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything? Yes. Really? Yes. And also, um, I think, what was the town with the red and yellow of the house, that a red house with yellow trim? What was that town? Hmm. Uh, let me look at my slides and we can figure that out. I will, town with the red and yellow. This one? Ah, uh, yeah, this is Sigishwara. How do you spell that? S-I-G-H-T-S-O-A-R-A. Close enough. If you put it in Google, it will, <laughs> it will finish it. Um, actually, the, the S has the little uh, tail on it. So that's where you get the shwar, the Sigishwara sound. Um, what was the name of the town that was star-shaped? Uh, Abba Yulia. And how do I spell that one? Uh, A-L-B-A-I-U-L-I-A. -A -I -I -A. <laughs> I've, I've tried, tried to gradually learn all the names. I'm, I'm hoping to eventually learn to speak conversational Romanian. I unfortunately um, have never learned any other languages. And I feel... A-L-B-A-I-U-L-I-A. -A and so I hope to eventually be able to, as I travel, to speak the language a little bit. I feel like as I've gotten older, like it's harder and harder to learn to speak and pronounce stuff properly. You know, I have a couple, of, I have family members that speak several languages and I'm really envious that I never, you know, was able to do that. Does anyone else have any questions about the trip or travel? We're gonna be going again in 2024 right now. The plan is to go, we're gonna do a nine, we're going for nine days and then after that 15 days and take two groups of sketchers. And um, I think the first one is gonna be Transylvania and the second one's gonna be Constanza because Mugor uh, really, I think he's gonna help us out with the next tour and he, uh, really was pushing us to go to Constanza because that's sort of by the seaside and it's a totally different area of, well, it's kind of like in Auckland where you're next to the water and you have the boats and, and so that sort of thing. Yes, what's your question? Um, financially, do the sketches pay more than just like the lodging you might have there? That covers your finances? Um, all, all they pay uh, is their airfare there. Um, and then every place we went with like had breakfast and then it included like the, the bus and all of this stuff. And strange optional things that Iwana does like getting mushrooms or like if there was some place that had a favorite treat that she'd like, she, she was, there was one place there was a, some French fries that she loved and she said, I'm gonna get French fries for everyone or plums. Like she loves fresh fruit and stuff like that. So she'll get stuff like that. Um, so she, yeah, yeah, the fee because it covers lodging and all that stuff. You want to spend months and months figuring out where to stay and negotiating with people. Um, you know, again, everybody was coming out of a pandemic. We were kind of, you know, a little bit nervous because people weren't even asking for money up front. They were just like booking stuff in, and <laughs> it was it was a little bit. There was a little bit of uncertainty with this trip, um, but. I always, every time I go back, I feel like I learn more and it's so interesting learning about the culture. Um, it's, it's, you know, a very European city, but it's, it's sort of was because of the, when they were under the uh, Ceausescu, they were very cut off from the rest of the country. And it, I think, took them a little bit longer to recover than a lot of places. Um, and Iwana actually immigrated to the United States in 1994 or five um and now they're looking into moving there like she's been looking for land to buy a place and moving there from they do they do it was a lot of great restaurants and a lot of quirky um art places and and that sort of thing and we really enjoyed it and we went to a couple art fairs like cbu had like a little art fair and people were selling stuff and 
you know, it was, it was really a neat place. And so I think it's going to become, we, we, we keep thinking it's going to become a really popular place for people to visit because it's, you know, sort of where, you know, very reasonably priced, but, um, you know, a lot of, you know, my, of course, my rate on things is I'd like to have a lot of castles. So <laughs> if it has a lot of castles, I like to go there. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Oh, uh, no, no, we don't pay the airfare is all you have to. Yeah, you have to. All you have to do is get airfare. Like you have to pay airfare and then the. Uh, yeah, but that's one it, like one price, like for lodging and the, that's how we've been doing it. We're new to this. This is kind of our new little side project that Iwana and I are doing. So we're still working on a website. And, um, you know, Iwana, actually, I brought up uh, if anyone's interested in finding out more about her, because she's a really interesting person. Um, is you can, um, let's see where I'm, I brought up her, oh, sorry. What, what is, what is, sorry about that. Didn't mean to, okay, yeah, Iwana has this, um, Iwana has this site called Iwana Talk Plants, and she does all these like talks in Romanian and English about plant, her, her passion is herbs and stuff like that. So she makes a lot of different things. Of course, of course. Yeah, we'll eventually have a website. We just have a bad time. But she, uh, you know, makes a lot of her own herbal things and stuff. Uh, and, and, uh, which is great, because when I travel, I'm always asking about the plant life and the animal life. Um, my day job is I mostly do uh, children's books. And so I have to do a lot of books where I'm painting different animals and I will ask her questions about, well, would this plant grow here in this environment? And we've actually gotten heated discussions before about, I had to do an illustration of Madagascar years ago and I painted all these vanilla, I drew all these vanilla plants. And she said, well, that's not, you know, a, a Madagascar plant. And I said, but they grow it there. And, you know, it's kind of like, are you allowed to show it or not? And, you know, she's one of the scientists that's my go-to when I I'm asking plant questions when I have to illustrate, you know, an ecosystem or an environment. Does anyone else have any questions about this? Yes. Oh, did you? It is really hard to decide because there is so much there. I mean, I, I have a affinity towards older architecture. And so I usually just, like pick something that has a particularly interesting aspect and I start drawing it or it has an interesting story. Um, and, and then, I mean, getting into sort of the drawing of those areas, um, I tend to work more at the relationships and think about negative space more than like drawing a perspective grid or something like that. I don't know if that, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> uh, and what was your question? Oh, that's a good, that's a really good question. I think, I think one thing is to do some research. I mean, fortunately I had, you know, Iwana with, with me to kind of, talk about, you know, customs and stuff. I think one of the most difficult things is, is language, you know, because I actually, when I first started writing Mugger, I started writing to him in English and a lot of people aren't comfortable if they don't speak English that well. And so eventually, um, you know, I had Iwana um, wrote to him and, and kind of introduced us in Romanian and that helped a lot so that he kind of understood what we were talking about. And there's still a couple of people that, um, I communicate with them, but Google Translate is a great thing. So I would write it and I'd take it into Google Translate and then I'd show it to Ioana and say, does this say what I think it says? And then I would I would try to communicate with them at least online in, in their language, um, you know, since I don't unfortunately speak Romanian. Um, and I think that it's it's good to kind of find out, like if you know someone that's, that's there, you know, that has lived there and find out from them and just, um, 
you know, like you said, be it, being a good global citizen, um, you know, being polite, um, asking if it's okay, don't go, you know, one you know, of the biggest thing is, is respecting cultural and religious places and that sort of thing, you know, don't, uh, you know, like here where you have the Maori culture, you know, a lot of native cultures don't like you to photograph or post pictures of their culture online and that sort of thing. So it's always good to ask about that kind of thing. Yeah, does anyone else have any questions? Yes, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily the quickest way to get anywhere. Um, but uh, we have a lot of great artists, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, really good artists there and a big artist community there. Most of the people that went on our trip, there was a couple that also was from uh, Colorado that joined us. Uh, she's a children's book illustrator and her husband was really interested in urban sketching and really got into it. Um, so that was, that was, that made it really fun, but we're hoping to do a website for this. It's something that's not going to probably happen that often because of both of our schedules, but we plan to do a couple more, you know, as our time permits. Yeah. How did you get into children's book illustrators? <laughs> <laughs> Just a short version. Um, you know, I, I should have, I, I didn't, since this was more about urban sketching, I didn't have my uh, presentation on children's books. I kind of got in it in a backwards way. I um, was doing, I've, I've been doing illustration and this is going to age me, but I've been doing illustrations since the early nineties. And I was working for a client where I was doing paintings of animals for, you know, those flags people hang on their houses with picture, with paintings on them. Well, I did paintings of some different animals that were for flags that they were gonna sell. And I had them on my website and I got contacted by Scholastic and they said, we love your animal paintings. And I started doing work for them. And then I just started getting book projects from there. So I probably started children's books in about 2005. Um, I, uh, I, I could get into a long history <laughs> illustration career, but, um, but that's, well, and, and really, I mean, this is a time uh, more than anything, if you are interested in children's books because of being online, really draw the type of stuff that you want and put it on your website. The biggest thing is people being able to find your artwork and finding it to be suitable for whatever their book is. Or you can do your own book. I mean, there, there's also that now too. I mean, publishing uh, is a changing landscape right now. So if you have an idea, nothing keeps you from you know, doing your own thing. Um, any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much. I think we're at about, are we at 45 minutes? Yeah, we're almost there, so <laughs> thanks everybody. And feel free to take a card. If any people have questions, take a card and you can email me later, whether it's about children's books or about. <laughs>